It's the start of another month on Wall Street, and that means I'm back with the top stocks to buy for this month. I have seven stocks for you today, all that I think have really long-term tailwinds. I'm not a short-term investor, so I don't necessarily know what these are gonna do short-term, but I'm thinking about where are these companies gonna be five, 10 years from now, and I think they all have tremendous tailwinds behind them. My name's Travis William. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content, and thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. Now, the first stock I wanna go over is one that I've owned for a long time, and I added to during the pandemic during lows, and that is MGM Resorts. And the reason to like MGM is shown in this chart right here. This is just simply revenue and free cash flow. You can see that revenue has grown tremendously over the last couple of years. 2020, obviously very impacted by the pandemic, both in the US and in China, but in the US in particular, gaming and entertainment spending recovered and overshot where it was before the pandemic. That's why you have $16.1 billion in revenue last year. And free cash flow is now at a record level as well, $1.76 billion over the past year at MGM Resorts. That compares to a market cap of $15 billion. So a price to free cash flow of under 10, I think that's a tremendous value right now. And MGM still isn't really at full strength. You can see in this first chart that Las Vegas has not only recovered, but actually overshot where it was before the pandemic. And that's what I discussed earlier, Las Vegas doing extremely well at MGM and all of the other competitors there. But what hasn't fully recovered is Macau. Macau was the largest gaming market in the world by about six times the size of the Las Vegas, of the Las Vegas Strip. MGM generated a little bit more revenue last year than they did before the pandemic, but they actually took some market share Gaming in Macau has not fully recovered to where it was at the end of 2019. And I think it's very possible that we will see Macau overshoot just like we did in Las Vegas. Now, Macau was impacted by shutdowns in China, which you can see from that chart, lasted for about three years. And some of the worst shutdowns were actually at the end of 2022. Then a lot of the COVID restriction just suddenly ended in 2023. And the region really ramped up throughout the year. That has made this now start to be a cash flow machine again, but we're not fully seeing that in the numbers. So you look at MGM's price to free cash flow of under 10. I think it's actually improving from that. On top of that, which you're not seeing in a lot of that valuation, is the impact of things like BetMGM, which the company 50% owns in the US. So the gaming business there, there's also an international gaming business. So management on the last conference call said, hey, our, actually our core business is only trading for four or five times EBITDA, which is a proxy for the cash flow that's coming from business. So we're just gonna buy back stock as aggressively as we can, and that's exactly what they have been doing. This is the shares outstanding, down over 200 million shares outstanding since a peak in 2017. Part of this was because they were selling real estate assets to REITs, particularly Vici Properties, and part of it is that they're just buying back stock at a relatively low valuation. I think as this continues, this is gonna be phenomenal for shareholders. Even if the business doesn't grow, if they just buy back 10% of their shares each year, shares could appreciate it 10%. That would be a nice return for investors, excluding any sort of growth from the business. But, but they do have growth ahead. There's a resort being built in Japan that should open around 2030. That could potentially be the most profitable resort in the world. It will be only one of a couple of resorts with an approved casino in Japan. So I think the comparison there would be Singapore and Singapore right now has two of the most profitable resorts in the world owned by one of them owned by Las Vegas Sands. So I think we could see MGM own about 40% of that casino in the future. On top of the tailwinds in Macau and Las Vegas, I think this is just a really well positioned company, a good valuation, and they're returning money to shareholders, which is a great sign to see. The second stock is one that I did more of a deep dive into recently, and that is Matterport. I interviewed CEO RJ Pittman. I will leave a link to that in the show notes if you wanna watch that full interview. But this is a company that is in spatial computing. So what you do, is you can take your iPhone or a specialized camera and map out an indoor or outdoor space. They typically use this in things like real estate and it will build a dollhouse, is what they call them, of your house so you can show digitally what a 3D asset looks like. And this can be used in a number of different use cases, things like selling a home, things like mapping out a real estate project, doing construction, 
figuring out what assets are in a given property. There's a ton of different use cases and Matterport has actually used artificial intelligence to build their system. So they've been using AI for a very long time for that, but they're also now starting to use AI to add tools that customers can use to add tremendous value. One of the ones that I think was really phenomenal to see when they introduced it was some of the generative assets that they can build from a Matterport. So if you wanna rent a commercial space, you can go in, take a Matterport of that space, say, hey, what does this look like as an office floor plan? What does this look like as a gym? What does it look like as a restaurant? It'll actually build that out for you. That's something that people pay real money for every single day. And this could be just done simply in Matterport. Could be very disruptive in real estate, could make more value, add more value to companies like Airbnb and Verbo to show exactly what people are gonna be renting when you show up at a space. So I love the technology. Now this is a company that needs to improve its financials, but when you pull out their cash on the balance sheet, the value of the business is only about $200 million. So if they are able to swing to free cash flow positive, which, which they have said they want to do by the end of 2024, I think this could be a phenomenally well positioned starting to hit that growth curve and trading at a relatively low valuation. So that's one of the reasons that I like Matterport a little bit higher on the risk curve than a stock like MGM, but a lot of potential for this company in the future. The third one is an area I don't normally invest, but that is the Vanguard Utilities Index Fund. And what this fund is, is it's just a ETF that owns a bunch of utility companies, some of the biggest utilities in the US, the regulated utilities, unregulated utilities, independent power producers, all kinds of different assets. And one of the reasons that I like this, I did a video on this recently, but if artificial intelligence is the boom that a lot of people think it is, it's gonna require billions and billions of dollars of worth of investment in new power plants, in transmission, in distribution, that is gonna be a huge tailwind for the entire utility industry. So investors today are gonna to get dividends typically in the range of four to 6% from utilities. You benefit from that with an ETF, you get the diversity of an ETF by owning this, and you just ride the tailwinds of artificial intelligence growth. These numbers seem small, but it's very possible that the artificial intelligence chips added to data centers this year will increase electricity demand by about half of a percent. That is about 50% of the normal increase in electricity demand in the US on a given year. This is not an industry that grows quickly. So if AI grows from here, exponential growth in 25, 2026, that could increase demand for all kinds of energy assets. And that's why I think an, e an ETF is a great way to play this. You're just riding the tailwinds of the industry, collect a nice dividend along the way, and it's low risk because of the diversification in that fund. So I think a great way to benefit from artificial intelligence without taking AI specific risk. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. The fourth stock is On Holding. On Holding is a shoe company, primarily moving more into apparel as well. Started with running shoes, now getting into tennis. Casual shoes has been very, very popular. But just check out this growth rate for On Holding. You can see the compound annual growth rate since 2019, 60.1%. Management said at the end of 2023 that they expect revenue to more than double between 2023 and 2026. Expect margins, gross margins to be around 60%. And what they want their EBITDA margin to be over 18%. So this is a very high growth prop, high growth company, and it's a very profitable company. I think the tailwinds behind on are just really attractive and the stock's pretty reasonably priced right now. Enterprise value to sales multiple is 5.5. On a forward basis, the price to earnings multiple is 44. But again, this is a very high growth company that typically takes away from your profitability short term. So I think long-term with these margins, this is gonna be a very, very profitable company. And typically these apparel companies, when they're growing at this high double digit growth rate, they're just phenomenal investments to just buy and hold long-term. So that's why on holding continues to be one that I really like right now. The fifth company is Alphabet. This is one that I've been adding to in 2024 and towards the end of 2023. And really the reason for that is I thought the market sold it off because Alphabet wasn't given a credit for a lot of their artificial intelligence capabilities and the potential growth in that market. But you might be shocked to hear this, Alphabet stock is up over 50% since the start of 2023. So since that ChatGPT moment, Alphabet has actually been a really phenomenal investment. Now there are definitely threats to this company. It's possible that artificial intelligence in some way, shape or form 
takes market share from search. But I think what we're seeing in AI today is that this is going to be much more of a sustaining innovation than it is a disruptive innovation. That means that the companies that are leaders in this space, leaders in technology are going to be the companies that lead in artificial intelligence. Google and Alphabet have a lead because of their data, because of their data centers, because of the speed of their products and because they're of their direct AI capabilities and the chips that were built to serve that market. For all of the problems that Gemini has gone through, if you just go into Gemini and compare Gemini with ChatGPT, you're gonna get very, very similar results from typical searches. Gemini is just gonna be much faster. And what you're seeing there is decades of work that Alphabet has done making Google searches faster. And I think those small things are gonna be differentiators in artificial intelligence. I think Alphabet and Google are gonna be able to figure out how to monetize this business extremely effectively. And on top of that, you have a phenomenal core business. You have the search engine, which is just churning out cash year after year. You have YouTube, where I'm posting this right now, just a massive media business, a lot of user generated content, so they don't have to pay people like me, except for a cut of advertising. So the economics of YouTube are gonna be more and more attractive as the platform grows. And then the Google Cloud, which just turned profitable over the past year, I think we're gonna to start to see the margins there improve throughout 2024 and into the future. And the tailwinds are gonna be behind this cloud, which all indications are there are a lot of companies who are testing using the Google Cloud instead of using some of the seeming leaders in the space like ChatGPT. So I think there's a lot to like with Alphabet. The stock's a little more expensive than I would like at 26 times earnings. On a forward basis, it's still 22 times earnings. So I'd love to see a pullback in shares. But I think if you're just a buy and hold investor, this is going to be a company that's going to do really well long term, starting to buy back stocks, starting to return that cash to shareholders. And I think some of the challenges that they've gone through over the past year could actually be catalysts for necessary changes at Google and Alphabet in the future. One thing that I didn't even mention yet that has a lot of potential optionality is Waymo. That's their autonomous driving business, but just another thing to like in that Alphabet suite of businesses. So that's why this is one of my top stocks for the month. The sixth one is Coinbase. Coinbase just has all kinds of tailwinds. The stock has been absolutely on fire and I don't see any reason not to like Coinbase through the rest of 2024. You have the Bitcoin ETFs, now billions of dollars under management and we haven't even seen that financial impact yet we'll start to see that in the first quarter when those results come out in about a month but coinbase is the custodian for a vast majority of the bitcoin etfs so they're going to benefit generating consistent ongoing revenue from that custodian position so i think that's going to be a tailwind you have the usdc token which is benefiting from higher interest rates they share that revenue with circle Coinbase also owns a position in Circle. It's possible that Circle goes public later this year. So we see exactly what they own there and unlock a little bit of that value. There's also the increase in trading. So that's a tailwind to Coinbase. That's really its core business. That's where the cash was generated during the pandemic when this company came public at such a profitable level. So the exchange business is gonna be very valuable for them. But I think long-term, the biggest thing that's happened over the last few months is some of the financial products that are moving on chain, BlackRock, announced a fund that is entirely on chain. So you can be able to do trading on chain. Dividends can be paid on chain. Bond payments could be done on chain. This is where the financial institutions are moving. The financial marketplace is moving. We're gonna move away from these big exchanges which are taking a cut and just move everything on chain so that you can trade more freely, have more liquidity in some of these markets. And I think that will be a benefit for the entire financial ecosystem, for users like you and me, and for companies like Coinbase. So a lot of tailwinds behind them. Again, the stock has gotten a little bit more expensive than it was a year ago, but a lot to like about the company's tailwinds and the use of the blockchain for real world things, not just trading crypto and number go up, number go down kind of thing, which I'm not particularly interested in. The final stock on my list today is Airbnb. Again, another company that I think you can just buy and hold for the next 10, 20 years. On a trailing basis, Airbnb's price to earnings multiple is just 23, so pretty good valuation. Enterprise value to free cash flow is 27. 
but there's massive tailwinds behind the business. You can see that in their bookings number that is now at 73.3 billion dollars over the past year, just continues to grow at a tremendous rate. Net income and free cash flow, both extremely positive. This is a very, very high margin business. And let's not forget about this one right here. This gets overlooked a lot. This is interest income for Airbnb. Airbnb gets to make money on not only the cash that it has on the balance sheet. Airbnb has a little over $10 billion worth of cash on the balance sheet and $5.9 billion worth of cash that customers have already prepaid for future stays. They call that funds receivable and held on behalf of customers. But Airbnb gets to generate interest from that cash that sits on their balance sheet right now that is approaching a billion dollars worth of income each year. Don't overlook that as a source of income. A lot of companies that have what's called a negative cash conversion cycle where they get paid before their expenses are due, do exactly this and generate a ton of money from that cash. And what management has done currently is just keep that cash on the balance sheet, but they could invest it in the future. They could buy back stock, a lot of optionality. Now, the reason to be excited about Airbnb long-term is that this is a company that I think is really well positioned for the future of artificial intelligence. And I'm not talking about building data centers and things like that. I'm talking about being able to go on Airbnb's site and saying, hey, you know what? I have a family of four. I want to go on a trip this summer here's my date ranges, here's kind of what we're looking for, and then Airbnb can build out a whole trip for you. They could do all of that. They could do all the planning, all the flights, the stay, your transportation, experiences. On top of that, anything that happens along the way, if flights get canceled, things like that, they could do that in the background as well. So I think there's a ton of optionality for Airbnb in the artificial intelligence space. Management started to talk about that a little bit on the fourth quarter 2023 conference call. But I think we're going to start to see that in 2024, these AI tools and the companies that can actually use them to make their experiences better are going to be where there's a lot of tailwinds and that opens up a lot of new verticals, as they call it, in Airbnb. So I love the business that we have today and the optionality for future growth at Airbnb. What do you think about all of these stocks? Let's go through them one by one. MGM Resorts, Matterport, the Vanguard Utilities ETF, On Holding, Alphabet, Coinbase and Airbnb. Which one is your favorite? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.